Hello and welcome to another accounting tutorial. Within this video, we'll be covering the extended trial balance. But firstly, if you could hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon, it would be hugely appreciated. I'll be bringing regular content to the channel to try and help you further your accounting knowledge and hopefully help with your exam preparation. So the aim of this session is to understand how to prepare an extended trial balance. If you've done level two, you should be familiar with the two column trial balance, or you may have just called it the trial balance. It's the same thing. Anyway, this does assume that you already have that existing knowledge. Firstly, I just want to talk about the two main financial statements, because we'll be mentioning both of these throughout the video, and it's well possible, depending on where you are in your studies, you may or may not have come across these yet. But it's well worth having an overview. So the two main financial statements are the statement of profit or loss and the statement of financial position. The profit or loss showing, as the name suggests, the profit or loss, i.e. the performance of the business, and the statement of financial position, which shows what the business is worth. Now the profit or loss shows the income and expenditure for a specified period of time. So a business's financial year would usually run for 12 months. Now the P&L will follow that 12 months and at the end of the financial year, all the income and expense accounts will be cleared to the profit or loss, effectively meaning you have a clean slate for the new financial year and the business can determine whether they've made a profit or a loss, as the name suggests. The statement of financial position, however, is continuous and it shows all the business's assets and liabilities at a point in time. So if a business were to generate a statement of financial position, it would effectively show everything the business owned and everything the business owed at that particular date. So why are we looking at the financial statements? Well, the trial balance provides the starting point for the preparation of these financial statements and it can come in two different formats. The two column trial balance, which you should have covered at level two, and the extended trial balance. Now let's take a look at the ETB in more detail. The extended trial balance allows the initial trial balance to be amended for year end adjustments and to be corrected for any errors that are found before providing the base to prepare the financial statements. The ETB will normally have a column for the account name followed by eight working columns. So we have the balance on the account and whether it's a debit or credit, any adjustments that need to be made to the existing balance. Then we have the columns for the profit or loss and finally the columns for the statement of financial position. So what goes where then? Well, in the profit or loss columns, we want to show all our income and expense account balances and all our expenses will be on the debit side and all the income accounts will be on the credit side. The difference then between the debit column within the statement of profit or loss and the credit column will give you either your profit or loss. If the credit side is higher, i.e. if the income side is higher, you've made a profit. And if the debit column is higher, then you've made a loss. We'll look at how this works practically in our case study. Next, the statement of financial position. So within here, we want all our assets, which will go on the debit side, and all our liabilities, which will go on the credit side. Also within the statement of financial position, we need our capital account. Cash your mind back to the accounting equation, assets minus liabilities equals capital. Well, the statement of financial position follows the format of the accounting equation. Right, let's get into our case study and bring all this together. Hawkins has a financial year end of the 31st of October 2021. You have been given the trial balance as at this date. Extend the initial trial balance and show the profit or loss to be transferred to the owner's capital account. You can see on the right hand side of the screen now the two column trial balance that we have been given. Now let's take that and the adjustments and put them into an ETB format. Here we go then. You can see that we have the account names running down the left hand side, followed by the existing balance, followed by the adjustments, and then finally our blank PL and statement of financial position columns. 
Let's go then. So opening inventory is a cost to the business and therefore goes to the P&L. Purchases are the same, so P&L. Sales revenue is income. Just make sure we make the adjustments as we go. So if like here, we have a credit balance in the sales, but the adjustment is a debit, then we need to take it off. Admin expense, as the name suggests, is an expense. IT equipment is an asset and therefore goes to the statement of financial position. The sales ledger control is the amount we're owed from credit customers and therefore an asset. Wages is an expense. So are rent and telephone. Discounts received is classed as income. Interest paid is an expense. Travel expenses, fairly self-explanatory, an expense. Buildings are an asset. Bank and cash are both assets. Capital is its own category, as I've previously discussed, but goes to the statement of financial position. It shows the amount of money the business owes the owner. Drawings, also the statement of financial position. It shows how much the owner has taken out of the business. A loan is a liability. Purchase ledger control is a liability. It shows how much we're owed by our credit suppliers. That is a liability. It could be an asset if HMRC owes the business money, but still the statement of financial position. So just make sure it's in the correct column. Closing inventory goes to both the P&L as a credit and a statement of financial position as an asset. It's a credit in the P&L because it's a reduction to the cost of sales. I'm not gonna go into that into detail right now, but I may do a separate video at some point to explain in detail why that is. But for now, it's a credit. Accrued expenses is a liability. Prepaid income is a liability. It's money we've been paid up front for goods or services that we haven't yet provided. Allowance for doubtful debt, not quite a liability, but it's there to offset against the sales edge of control to show a more realistic receivables figure. Then the adjustment account is an expense if it's on the debit side, which here it is. If it was on the credit side, then it would be income, but it will always go to the P&L. Right, that was a journey. Now the final step is to record the profit or loss and then transfer this to the statement of financial position. So add up your credit column and then your debit column in the profit or loss and do the difference between the two. So our credit column comes to £384,075. And the debit column comes to £349,900. We have therefore made a profit of £34,175. To enter this, we need to debit the profit or loss and credit the statement of financial position. Add up your statement of financial position columns and you should see that they both now balance. If they don't, you've done something wrong. So you'll more than likely know whether you've got this question correct, because if your statement of financial position columns equal, the chances are it's spot on. Which brings us nicely into error checking. Now this is just my order in which to check errors. It's by no means a must. If you like to do it in a different way, that's absolutely fine. So the first thing I would check for is addition. It may be that you've got all the figures correct in the correct place, and when it's come to balancing them off, you've added them up wrong, which is really easily done. Next, I check I've copied the figures over correctly by working back through each one and making sure I've copied them correctly from the balance columns. It's really easy to transpose two figures, so this would be the next thing I check. Third, double check you've not accidentally changed a credit balance to a debit and vice versa. Then make sure you've got them in the correct statement. Be careful not to change everything here. If you're going to start changing them, do them one at a time. And that feeds into the last point. See what the difference is to make it balance and then look for that particular figure. If you've done everything above and it still doesn't balance, panic. I'm joking, don't panic. I'd suggest at that point, move on, have a look at another question and come back to it. Because often you'll find a break and then coming back with fresh eyes really does help. 
So that wraps up the video. I hope you've enjoyed it and found it useful. And remember, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.